I'm Joe Halco, Director of Community Relations for Northwestern Counseling and Support Services, and welcome to another episode of NCSS Here For You. Since 1958, Northwestern Counseling and Support Services has been providing access to high-quality services which promote healthy living and emotional well-being to the residents of Franklin and Grand Isle Counties. Over the years, as the needs of the community have changed, so too have the programs and services that we make available to assist children, adolescents, adults, families, and seniors. We take our role in the community seriously and strive to provide a continuum of the highest quality services to meet the needs of individuals who at any point seek assistance. This month's episode is titled, Exposing the Conspiracy of Goodness. With stress, anxiety, and depression becoming more predominant as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, social justice issues, and an unprecedented election cycle, it's no wonder that people are exhausted after spending time engaging on the internet and social media platforms. The effects have brought incredible disruption to everyday life. During a time like this, we need to stop and look at the good in the world. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. To discuss the exposure of the conspiracy of goodness, I'm pleased to introduce this month's guest, Dr. Linda Ulrich, who is the founder of Ever Widening Circles, a website publishing articles about remarkable insights and innovative uh, going un and innovation going uncelebrated since 2014. The mission is to give people less fear, more joy, and a brighter future. By providing that, it still is an amazing world. She is the best-selling author, TEDx speaker, and social innovator, and has been speaking to thought leaders around the globe for decades. And her gift is in synthesizing their genius into narratives, ideas, and connections that can bring us all together. Dr. Linda Ulrich and her team are changing the negative dialogue about our times and ushering in a new era. And now I'd like to welcome Dr. Linda Ulrich. Welcome to the program. Hi, I'm so delighted to be here with you. Well, it is just wonderful to have you here today. And, you know, certainly, um, you know, we're looking at around 11 months of an unprecedented time in world history, let alone here in Vermont and in Franklin County. Um, and I think it's really a good time to just take a deep breath and look at everything around us that is Good. And I think having you here today uh, will highlight that. I'm hoping I can give people all kinds of practical tips and we will go away with some peace of mind. So let's do this. Let's start the program today by viewing your TEDx talk on exposing the conspiracy of goodness. We'll take a look at that and then we'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll, and we'll talk. Okay, great. There is a conspiracy of goodness happening right now. An enormous wave of progress is well underway in the world and almost no one knows about it. Now, not many people know that during World War II, the little village of Le Champon, France, managed to save 3,500 Jews from the Nazi concentration camps. At great risk to their own lives and with no formal organization, they saved thousands, most of them orphans, for several years. Now in 1987, a rabbi, Harold Schulweis, was giving a talk in Europe about this chapter in history. And he said at the end of the talk, an old man stood up in the back of the room to say he'd been one of the Dutch rescuers. And the old man asked, why do we always focus on the conspiracy of evil that was World War II? Do you think I could have saved an entire family in my home without the active participation of the milkman, the mailman, and the neighbors? No, the old man said. For every one person saved, there were seven who were rescuers. It was, he said, a conspiracy of goodness. 
Now, this is who we are. We are not what we see on the internet and social media right now. We are doers. We are rescuers. We are helpers. We have been for hundreds of thousands of years. The advent of the internet does not change that. While there are countless people who are very famous for doing acts of incredible heroism and goodness, by far the majority of people who are making a, the world a better place, well, they're genuine conspirators for goodness, like the milkman, the mailman, and the neighbors in Le Chambon, France. Their stories are just not rising to the top of the internet for now. Take, for example, Topher White. He's an ordinary engineer who has discovered that we can save the rainforest using old cell phones like we all have in a junk drawer. His organization, the Rainforest Connection, takes the old cell phones, tunes them to pick up only the sound of a chainsaw, and then places them at intervals around the forest. And the minute illegal loggers fire up the chainsaws, the phone sent a signal up to a satellite and down to local rangers who can swoop in and save the day and save the rainforest for the local communities who depend on them for their livelihood. Another great example is an organization called Skatistan. So that story starts with a wonderful Australian researcher named Oliver Perkovich, who wound up in 2007 in Kabul, Afghanistan. And he looked around himself and realized that 75% of the population were under the age of 25, and no one was investing in this group after decades of war. So he looked at the problem carefully and the resources at his disposal and decided there was something that he held dear that might hold an answer. Skateboards. Oliver realized that no one had banned skateboarding yet. So he swooped under the radar screen and started an enormous community, all focused on educating girls and street children who might never have a shot at a nice future. Skatistan grew so fast that in 10 years, they had similar programs up and running in Cambodia and Africa. And have you heard of a wonderful thought leader named Daniel Kish? Maybe you have. Some people refer to him as the original Batman. You know, Daniel got that moniker because he lost both his eyes as a baby and taught himself to see with sound. Part of the brain that was going to be devoted to sight repurposed itself. And now he uses a kind of natural sonar like bats and dolphins to create mental images of the world around him. Daniel's organization, Visioneers.org, has taught this technique to thousands of people in 40 countries. Daniel can ride a bike. Now, I tell you, his story just kicks down the door on what we might all think is impossible. What Daniel's doing is backed up by lots of research on other capabilities that our brains might have. Right between our own ears, who knows what we're capable of? I mean, these kind of things, stories go on and on. Um, scientists have discovered that trees are talking to each other. And doctors are using virtual reality instead of anesthesia. Have you heard of Damien Mander? He's a former counterinsurgency expert in the Iraq War who has discovered that single mothers make the best game wardens in Africa for a whole host of reasons. And they are changing conservation in ways that will be portable all around the world, saving endangered species. It makes my heart sore to know these stories. Why aren't we hearing this in the news and on the internet? I don't think it's a lack of goodness in the world. I think it's a lack of awareness. Because the earliest kinds of selflessness and good intention is always quiet. And for now, those stories are just not making it to the top of the internet. So if you feel like it's all too crazy, too much to tackle, like we can never rein the internet in, I'd like to offer you a different perspective. Experience tells me that the internet is only a slice of reality. A more complete picture of our world and each other would include countless ordinary people making the world a better place in all kinds of ways, large and small. And for now, 
their stories just aren't rising to the top because the internet has become an attention economy. Nothing else matters there. In fact, the last 20 years, the internet has been designed to completely capture and hold our attention. And to do that, they've designed, especially social media, to trigger some of our most primitive and irresistible emotions, like fear, anger, and scarcity. What we have now is an internet functioning like a toddler running with scissors. And the first thing we have to do is stop running with it. What if, instead of allowing the internet to unconsciously divide and confuse us, what if we conspired to bring goodness and progress to the surface on the internet? What if we chose to elevate what's best in each other and the world? We can do that. There are four simple shifts that we can use the internet as normal, but practice and fundamentally change what rises to the top of the internet. Now, the first shift is really easy. Pause. Pause before you click on anything because someone is counting every click you make. And what we click on, we get more of. Your click is a vote for anything you engage with. And by click, I mean a tap, a like, a share, a comment. Anything that we engage gets brought to us and served to us next even if it's leaving us confused, heartbroken, or fearful. And that brings me to shift number two, ignore more. We can ignore the chaos building and all that negativity right into obscurity. No one is creating content if we don't engage with it. I'm guessing that if you pause for just a millisecond before you click on anything and ask yourself one simple quick question, do we need more of this? I'm guessing about 80% of what you used to click on out of fear, anger, or boredom, you will ignore. And that brings you to shift number three, seek signs of goodness and progress. For now, the internet will not bring it to you. It's not built that way. But if you do the first two shifts, pause and ignore more, eventually signs of goodness and progress will start popping up everywhere for you. And that brings me to the fourth shift. Share signs of goodness and progress. Content creators are paying very close attention to what we share. And the internet is now built to amplify that. We can use that to open a new era. We have all the power to bend the internet in the direction of positivity. Over and over again, the opening of a new era happens when a new way of thinking takes hold and starts gaining conspirators. And a new way of doing things starts building momentum of goodwill that becomes unstoppable. A conspiracy of goodness is a pattern throughout history just before the next major leap in progress. Think about it for a minute. We humans have a habit of adopting some really primitive practices that eventually collapse of their own weight. Think about things like gladiators fighting to the death in the Colosseum, slavery, child labor, uh, not allowing women the right to vote. All those practices made perfect sense to many until one day they didn't. And this is the way social change happens, quietly at first, when one by one, we take matters into our own hands, turn it against things that seem like madness and offend us at our core. I think we're at just one of those tipping points right now with the craziness in our online lives. We have got to stop the noise, the negativity and the division, and we can get there. We can rethink the role of the internet and make one of those leaps in progress. We can conspire against the chaos builders and the noise. And we can quietly take matters into our own hands and make the world a better place. Remember that for every one person saved in Le Chambon, there were seven who were rescuers. We don't have to go out and personally save the rainforest. 
we can be like the milkman, the mailman, and the neighbors and create all kinds of goodness. We can start and propagate waves of progress. It is still an amazing world. When that slice of reality rises to the top of the internet, a new era will open for us all. And all we have to do is pause, ignore more, seek signs of goodness and progress, and share it. Welcome to the Conspiracy of Goodness. All right. That was terrific. Now, on starting the new year off right, 2020 was a tumultuous year, and the new TEDx talk is all about opening up a new era. Can you give us some perspectives on that which might not have been in the brief TED talk? How do we start anew and prepare for a happier, healthier, stronger 2021? So the first piece of advice that I'm giving people is pay attention to what you're giving your attention to. I mean, this is at the core of how we feel about a given day. It, it all comes back to what we're giving our attention to. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we could go down that rabbit hole and talk about social media, for instance, in our lives. When we get on our phone, what are we giving our attention to? But I, I'm hoping to come back and really explore that another time. But let, if we stay at a high level, what you give your attention to matters because it expands. Have you ever noticed that if all you focus on in the work environment is somebody that drives you a little crazy, that craziness seems to just multiply. Sure. Whereas if you really look at the positive in someone you otherwise uh, might have tough feelings for, you can start finding it. Yeah. What yeah. we give our attention to expands. And that applies to how much energy and attention we're giving the negative news and the chaos builders, the, the people that are just ratcheting up the drama on social media. So in 2021, I'm saying, catch yourself. Periodically, if you're on your phone, catch yourself saying, oh my gosh, I went on the, the, my, my social media just to see my sister's new baby. And here I am 40 minutes later. I gave 40 minutes of my precious life to that. I gave my attention to that constant scrolling and many mm -hmm. of the things we're clicking on are pretty darn negative. So, um, so that's a whole, whole other thing we could talk about. But, you know, our brains are built to seek signs of disorder and danger because for 40,000 years that was a good policy. <laughs> when there were saber-toothed tigers around, <laughs> our brain had to always be on for danger. But, but this is not our world now. And so I think um, the, the New Year's resolution I'm telling people to start, whether they're into resolutions or not, is to, is to remember that every click you make on the internet is a vote. Because what we click on, we get more of. That's just the way the internet's built, like we talked about in the TED Talk. Yeah. And so if you're paying attention to what you're giving your attention to on the internet, and as I mentioned in the talk, you ask yourself before you click on things, do we need more of this? <laughs> That's such a great question because I, I really think you'd click on about 80% less of the chaos and the noise and you'd feel a lot better for what you decided to give your attention to. Mm -hmm. Those are some great points. Now in your book, Happiness is an Option, and in your TEDx talk, you talk about how we can change the role of social media in our lives and in our children's lives. I know you touched a tad about it there just a moment ago, but, but can you share more thoughts on that? So the first thing we need to remember, and maybe most of us know this, but our kids really don't know it, is that social media has become comparison without context. So we're, we're comparing ourselves to those influencers. We're saying they have more money, more fun, more whatever than we do. Or even you know, in our private circles, we'll see a friend that just got this or went there or what have you. So, but we don't have the whole context of their life. So we're 
constantly comparing ourselves for this to, with this idealized version that we all put up on social media. I, I don't know about you, but, you know, <laughs> last weekend when my garage was in such a state of disorder and mayhem and I hadn't taken a shower in two days because we'd been working on it that long. I didn't pop any pictures of Dr. Chuck and I and put it on social media, right? <laughs> but <laughs> it was craziness in our lives for two days. And that's how it is for all of us. Influencers that we see that we're comparing ourselves to, they have garages to clean. They have family members that drive them crazy. They have dogs that poo on the floor. Our lives are 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 a kaleidoscope, all of us, of good things and bad things. And if we don't keep that in mind, we will compare ourselves to all those perfect days, perfect moments, perfect photos, perfect comments on social media. And we'll, we'll constantly live in a state of feeling that we're not enough. And that's not true. We all put our pants on the same way. That is so true. And, you know, you, you mentioned that reminds me. You remember when uh, the term reality TV first took hold? And I remember there were some people you talked to and they go, oh, my goodness, the same thing. Oh, look at their lives. This time. It's like time out. Number one, they're producing this to be consumed by people. It's only bits and pieces of a given day or whatever. You know, if they want to start uh, arguments or they want to highlight on something else, that's what you're going to see. As you said, you're not going to see the baby who they need to change yeah. the diaper and, you know, all the other things that everybody goes through day in and day out. Um, so I, I, I know exactly uh, what, what you're talking about. Now, um, you know, you give us some practical tips for how we can thrive in spite of all the negativity on the Internet and especially social media. Can you share some of those with us? So... I, I've, uh, tr my husband and I were very lucky. Um, Dr. Chuck played basketball, um, professional basketball, and it started us, it took us from a little cornfield um, in Illinois where we both grew up. We were childhood sweethearts, so we've, we've been on the long road together. It took us from that cornfield to living all over the world. And what we have, have seen is that humans are amazingly ingenious, generous, thoughtful. I mean, the, the capacity in humanity is just sitting there waiting to be elevated. And what is happening is we're all um, unconsciously joining this downward spiral that we see in the negative news mm -hmm. day after day. So I always like to talk to people about the fact that the news <laughs> is news because everything we see there is an outlier. It's not common. Now, just because we hear it, hear that same horrifying thing 25 times a day through the breaking news cycle, or every time we go on, on our favorite news show, they're talking about it again, doesn't mean it happened any more often. Yeah. But our brains are built to really, as I mentioned, pay attention to signs of disorder and, um, and danger. So it, our brains make this leap that if we hear about something over and over and over again all through the day that... It is this giant threat to us. But really, we, we can look at the news. When I look at the news, I, I have a, a really good strategy. So because of this website where we've written thousands of articles about all the good that's happening in the world at ever-widening circles, um, you can just pop the surprise me button there and just land on any article you see and you will go away going, oh my gosh, how did I not know this is going on in the world? So I'm finding a balance in my life. I'm not Pollyanna. I, I've, been, I've slept on plywood in Tibet. I know that there's a lot of harshness in the world, but there is also so much goodness. So make sure that in this effort to pay attention to what you're paying attention to, you give as much of your attention to the good things happening in the world as the stuff that kind of wants to take hold of our brain, the signs of disorder. And, um, and what I found is a really good um, little exercise. This, my day goes bad just like everyone else's. Yesterday, I had a tough, tough phone call at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I steady myself when I get that, uh, that broadside. <laughs> And then I say, what could be good about this? Now, 
It's a really strange thing, but, and when you're just getting started, it's very hard to ask yourself that question and come up with any answers because we all have big, big things happening in our lives. But after practicing that for, for several months, you're going to be able to find opportunity and disaster. And that's where I think we are with the pandemic. I think, <laughs> I think, sure, all of us are very tired of this. But maybe instead of like giving up on the safety measures we need to be doing, like wearing masks and washing our hands, maybe instead of stopping participating, we do something different. Maybe we just change our perspective and we start looking for the opportunity and disaster. So when I sit down to patients um, in my dental practice, every single one now, since the pandemic started, I plop down and I say, so what have you discovered that you never would have known had you not been forced to go through this pandemic. And almost everyone to a person has discovered that they are having so much fun cooking with their family, or they've discovered, you know, snowboarding in some weird way that they never thought, of. I know what it was. Um, a lot of the re ski resorts are turning some of their slopes into mountain bike trails mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that they, they would have never done that had the pandemic not come. So. On and on it goes, people are discovering cra crazy good things. And this is the mode we can change to. We can change from division to discovery. We can change from contempt to curiosity. If we make those changes, instead of refusing to participate in the safety things that we all really know we need to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get it that we're tired, we so are tired. But yeah. what if we changed from contempt to curiosity, and we got curious about what's possible now. What could be good about this? This is a great point, and uh, you know, looking at the, at the positive in anything, virtually, because there are positives that are going to come out of this. Many positives that will be long lasting, long after the pandemic is over. And again, I think that's people being innovative. They're looking for for ways for alternatives, mm -hmm. and those are good things. Now, granted, there's been an awful lot of negative about this, but again, I think for the long haul, no matter what organization, one individual, there will be some mm -hmm. positive measures that, that have come out of it. To your point, when one pivots and looks for what can be right, what can be done differently right. <clears throat> to improve matters. Correct. So um, now we only have a few moments less, but I left. But I do want to ask you. I know you have a podcast. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us about that? So um, for for our articles at Ever Widening Circles since 2014, I've been chatting with thought leaders all around the world who are doing the most extraordinary things. Like some of the people I mentioned mm -hmm. in the TED Talk, I could go on with those stories for hours. So very often I c communicate with these folks and um, have the most extraordinary co conversations with them because it's amazing to take a, a thought leader who's really fighting an uphill battle and have them share what makes them get up in the morning because they're really up against it. And yet they have this vision of what's possible for us all. So I started, <laughs> I've started recording these conversations that I'm having with, with thought leaders around the world and it's at the Ever Widening Circles podcast. And um, for instance, I talked to a, 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 a physician who is the first responder called with his team of 27 people to all of the, the great national natural disasters in the world, Dr. Diamond. And we could have talked about the bad things happening in the world, but no. He tells stories for a, for a whole hour about all these amazing examples of people coming together and the humanity that he's seen in disasters. Um, I talked to a man just the other day, uh, Bill Courtright, about stress mastery, not management. He has this way that he talks about how we can master our fears and master that, that our head talk, our chatter in our minds. Um, so I, I talked to a, an amazing New York City chef who's doing all this amazing stuff with cooking and kids. Boy, did she have some great tips for us in our homes. <laughs> so the, Amer the Ever Widening Circles podcast is a weekly uh, podcast that is bringing all kinds of light to people's lives. Well, thanks. Thank you very much. And I want to thank my guest, Dr. Linda Ulrich, uh, for being on the show today and sharing her insights on a, the way to change the negative dialogue about our times and ushering in a new era by exposing the conspiracy of goodness. 
I also want to thank you, the viewer, for spending time with us again this month. You can learn more about all of our NCSS programs and services by visiting ncssinc.org. I'm Joe Helko, and I'll be back next month with another episode of NCSS here for you.